Good evening and thank you very much for joining us in our world in the limelight. I know that I said that I wasn't going to deal with contentious stuff, but um, this is something that is of profound interest and yeah. Thoughts on health and safety. Recent events have again put a strong emphasis on the crucial business that is health and safety. As a landscape architect, it was an element we had to address in our training, which does make me a little fussy about ladders and balance, etc. Simon has regularly had to fill in risk assessment forms, some of which go on for pages of irrelevancy. And this over administration mindset is one of the things that has lain behind a dismissive attitude in some quarters that it is a purely box ticking exercise in an overly litigious culture. This perception is not true. Lives can depend upon doing it. Lives depend upon it being done in a manner where it makes as much sense as possible while not ignoring the small things that can cause catastrophes. Lives depend upon people who have concerns about safety at all levels in any sort of hierarchy, having the chance to speak their piece and feel that they have been heard. Too often, these concerns are brushed away as negativity. I have worked in a culture where this attitude prevailed, although it was only mental health that was impacted, which as far as I know, remained manageable. In 2015, I completed working on my grandfather's autobiography and published the book. Our name was Harding, so as you can imagine there are echoes, although not a relative as far as I know. Sir Harold Harding, civil engineer and tunneler, worked on projects that required an awareness of health and safety at all levels. Sadly he did have to face the loss of colleagues but did his best to make a difference where he could. In 1966, he had the harrowing experience of sitting on the tribunal that investigated the terrible disaster at Aberfan in South Wales, where so many children and teachers were killed by a cold slurry mountain slipping on top of the local school. This is a disaster that still haunts South Wales and all locals. The media anticipated a whitewash. But the three tribunal members came out with a report that, while not allocating malicious blame, did focus on a culture that ignored concerns and blocked the chain of command off from what the upper echelons blatantly deemed to be dissent. Dangerous attitude, that one. In the report, they used a phrase that chimes across the years. In their conclusions, the tribunal alluded to ignorance and bungling ineptitude. In a way, it was willful ignorance, since there was no way for the slurry drivers to complain about a shortage of sites to dump the coal spoil, so they dumped it where they could, and then got an, into the habit of carrying on doing so. In their report, which for its time was extensive, they included recommendations on approach that have been translated into codes of practice and legislation in a number of countries, as well as the UK. A few years ago, Simon and I were doing a lichen survey in one of London's parks, accompanied by some of the park keepers who wanted to see more on the lichens. Then they went off on their break, and as they went with their various wheelbarrows, one shouted to the others, Look out for the elf! which we both thought was a magical way of addressing the situation. Look out for the elf allows for celebrations, for children's things. Without looking properly at it, as a reality, so much of importance can be lost by mistake. These comments are intended to be about safety in a wide context and not to imply that any one situation that has not been the subject of detailed scrutiny had any causes that could have been predicted in advance reliably. They are intended to give a positive view of doing things properly for good reasons and to avoid the temptation to give them a triviality that is not what they are about. Thank you very much for watching and wishing <sighs> solace, I don't know, yeah.